Welcome to the 2015 After School Special, uh, SVA's Alumni Film and Animation Festival. This is the second year of the festival and we're so glad to be back. Uh, anyone here from, for last year or is this your first time? Last year? Anyone? Okay, a few people. Um, anyone here from School of Visual Arts, SVA people? Great, thank you for coming out. So uh, the rest of the audience may or may not know this, but this is part of the School of Visual Arts, SVA Theater. Um, and we're an art and design school in the city, and we've been churning out terrific alumni for, uh, for quite some time. And tonight we're here to, um, to introduce the, the works of two alumni, uh, specifically Ed Hellman, who's a uh, recent graduate of the uh, live action short film program, and uh, he'll be debuting in what we're sort of calling the world premiere, New York premiere, cinematic premiere of Dime Crimes number 34, which a number of SVA alumni worked on, and some of them are in the audience this evening. And, uh, and then we are here uh, tonight, and we're so thrilled to have him here, uh, renowned animator and filmmaker Bill Plimpton is here this evening, and he is an alum as well. Um, but just to give you a sense of what we do here at SVA Theater, we have a wide variety of events throughout the year, and many of them are free or low cost. So I don't know if you realize, but this whole weekend there's a festival of screenings, uh, and there are eight free screenings and Q&As. There, um, there are schedules out in the lobby if you want to pick one up, and there are big posters if, if you miss those. But this year we have over a dozen SVA alumni, uh, a dozen departments at SVA represented in this festival. So we're so pleased to really have a wide array from animation to film to, uh, to design and everything in between. They're all represented this year in, uh, in the festival. Uh, I want to thank David Rhodes, the president of SVA, for, uh, for the idea of the festival and, uh, and anyone else in the, in the audience tonight who's been helping with the festival, especially uh, my folks up, up in the booth tonight. Uh, he'll be taking care of you on the mics and the big screen. And, um, and so uh, some other stuff we have coming up, we've been doing a lot of anniversary screenings. We did a 20th anniversary usual suspect screening with alumni uh, Brian Singer earlier this week. We have the uh, 25th anniversary screening of Edward Scissorhands coming up in December, so if you want to catch that. And then Silence of the Lambs and Taxi Driver next year for their, uh, I think, 30th and 40th uh, anniversaries respectively. Um, but tonight, uh, I'm pleased to present, uh, as I said, Bill Plimpton. Uh, we're going to be showing his Oscar-nominated short, Your Face, as well as um, a new short, as well as uh, his feature film, Cheatin'. But he's going to come up here later on and introduce those to you tonight. Um, but first, we're going to show a short film, uh, as I said, Dime Crimes number 34. And I have a uh, current SVA student, Stephen Duffy, here. And I have the director of that film, Ed Hellman. So I'd like to welcome to this, them to the stage now for a very brief Q&A pre-film. And then uh, after that film, Bill Plimpton will come up, and he will uh, introduce his films. And then we'll have him here for a Q&A back with Stephen afterwards. So Stephen and Ed, come on down. Yo. Yeah. Uh, oh, cool. yeah. So I'm, I'm Steven. I'm a uh, current SVA student in the uh, traditional animation program. And uh, over here we have the, uh, the director of the, uh, the short film we're going to be screening first, Dime Crimes number 34. Uh, give a round of applause for Ed Hellman. Hi. <laughs> uh, so, Ed, you're, uh, you're an SVA alum. Uh, tell us a bit about your work uh, after graduating, how you uh, ended up uh, directing this short and some of your other uh, uh, directing projects. Um, I guess I'll kind of go back a little bit, okay. but I'll answer that question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, without saying too much about Dime Crimes 34, because you haven't seen it yet, um, it kind of deals with people that are trying to escape from life into their fantasy world and... I think that's kind of the, the mindset that I had before I went to SVA. Okay. And after I got out of uh, undergrad college, uh, I spent some time in a really weird, mysterious job underground um, for about six years, kind of escaping, making big decisions in my life. And when I got to SVA, I think that the big difference was uh, I came out of SVA with a lot of focus and figuring out, figured out exactly what I wanted and had a lot of people that would help me do that and who I wanted to help. Um, so I was kind of doing freelance work, uh, doing directing web series and 
commercials and short films. But I had a group of people from SVA that I had kind of compiled that I was good friends with. And we were approached by a writer, John Michael Wagner, uh, who's here, um, to about this film, Dying Crimes 34. And it really connected with that feeling of wanting to escape, which I had felt. Uh, so that kind of uh, brought on the project. And we realized that Dying Crimes 34 was something that had about like 95% alumni participation. So the uh, producer, Alain Gelnick, um, who's an SVA grad, yeah, you know him. Um, <laughs> he suggested we reach out to SVA and ask for their support in the community. And to their credit, they offered us a lot of free equipment and some space. And they're now doing that every year for the alumni uh, in their program. So if you're in their program, you can get a free equipment now. So. Uh, good, to, good to know. Uh, that actually kind of gets into my next question. Uh, I know. What sort of uh, advice would you give the, uh, uh, the SBA students here in the audience tonight? I guess probably don't be an asshole. Um, <laughs> just being nice usually helps. Yeah. And there's always one asshole on set, so probably don't be that person. And I just kind of help the people around you. And uh, the people that I still work with are the people that I uh, helped out on their sets and they helped out on mine and it just really goes a long way and just you know when you have people to help you with your passion project because everyone has a passion project uh, just make them feel respected or intimidated yeah <laughs> Um, all right. So, uh, as uh, as Adam said, and as we've uh, we've figured out, uh, we've got a lot of the crew uh, from the uh, uh, for the film uh, here in the audience tonight. Do you want to uh, introduce them? It's all the audience. Um, yeah, uh, I'll try to remember who all they are. There's Alan Gelnick, who's 2013. You can stand up if you want, Alan. Just Alan. Uh, Eric Pennykoff edited it. Um, there's, uh, I think some of them aren't here, but there's Jaime Medrano, who's the cinematographer. Stephen Tong, yeah, keep clapping. <laughs> Stephen Tong was the AC. Victoria Aguila was the award-winning production designer. Ping Ping Song, SJ Costello, John Tashiro. Uh, yeah, you have to keep clapping. Um, and a whole bunch of other people I can't remember now. Okay. And me. That's all right. We've got credits. Yeah. Yeah, look at the credits. Yeah. I'd now like to welcome our second uh, SVA alumnus and special guest for this evening to introduce his films, Bill Plimpton. Yeah, just real quickly, I just want to introduce uh, the films we're going to see uh, of mine tonight. Uh, Your Face was nominated for an Oscar back in 87, and Footprints is my brand new short film and we're very proud to show it. And then Cheatin', which is my, my brand new feature film, and um, I hope you like it a lot. It's about 40,000 drawings. I did every one. So I want to introduce my studio, uh, The Row. Do you want to raise your hand, everybody from the studio? Go put the studio. Uh, and then afterwards, after a quick q and I will be giving everybody, I have cards here, everybody gets a drawing, a free sketch. So I'll be outside in the lobby with some books and DVDs. So don't forget to stop by and pick up your goodies. Uh, enjoy the show. Thank you very much. So, uh, so I got a couple questions with you uh, before the uh, uh, the signing outside in the lobby. Um, the uh, the first thing I, I want to talk to you about. I'm really curious to hear about your approach to caricature. You know, I really love the uh, the, the character design, especially in in Cheatin'. Uh, and I'm curious to hear about uh, your your approach to that. Well, um, I started out as a caricature artist, as a professional caricature artist for newspapers and magazines. And um, I thought that, I think that caricature is the essence of animation. Because animation, the, the thing that's great about animation is it takes something that we all know, an icon or a stereotype, and exaggerates it. And that's the, basically what a, a, a caricature is. And when you exaggerate something, it becomes funny. And so I think all great caricature artists are good animators because you have that, that, that talent to, to uh, distort and, and to make something weird and, and fresh and different. And that's, that's why I love animation. All right. 
Um, and I do want to uh, interrupt yes. real quick. Okay. I forgot to introduce the loneliest stoplight. I, uh, I got it confused with footprints. But Loneliest Stoplight is actually my brand new film. This is like the third screening, I think. So uh, I'm glad you liked it. Thank you very much for that. <clears throat> and so uh, uh, we we briefly talked about this before uh, that you you wear so many hats on a on a film like this, and every single one of those drawings is yours. Uh, I'm I'm and you've got plenty of other uh, projects in the pipeline. I'm I'm really curious what's a what's a Bill Plimpton work day. Uh, well, I get up around uh, 5.30 or 6, I go right to the drawing board, and I can do about three or four hours of uh, animation. Then I'll have breakfast and go to the studio. And most of the studio work is uh, business stuff, which I, I'm not crazy about, but it has to be done, especially now I'm doing more commercials and, and things like that. <clears throat> so maybe I'll get two or three hours of animation done at the office, and then I come home, and oftentimes I'll work two or three hours at home also. But, um, you know, I'd like, I'd like to get about 10 hours of animation a day. Uh, weekends, I can get a lot more done. So, um, But, you know, people say, well, aren't you tired? Don't you have carpal tunnel syndrome? And I, it's really great for the hand. Or, uh, it's like exercise, and I feel so so exhilarated after a, d a day of drawing uh, all day. It, it is, it's very refreshing to have these characters come out of my brain and come to life on the drawing board and do these weird um, transgressive things that, that you can't do in real life. And that's the great thing about being an animator is there, there's no limits. You can do whatever you want. You can offend anybody. You can distort people. You can have them do really awful, horrible things like in cheating. And uh, it's funny. And it works, so that's that's what that's my plan. Yeah, um, that actually uh, uh, kind of goes into my my last question. Um, so part of the appeal of being a, an independent animator is that, uh, especially in your case, uh, the material of the uh, the film is entirely up to you. Uh, you're not afraid to depict material that defies what a, a typical American audience uh, expects from animation. You really push forward that truth that animation is not a genre, uh, or at least that it, it shouldn't be. Uh, is that uh, uh, so? That is intentional. Uh, you know, what's a uh, um, what's your mindset going into a, into a film like Cheatin'? Um, that was based on a relationship I had about 15 years ago, and I thought this was the love of my life, and we moved in together. And after about three weeks, we were ready to strangle each other, <laughs> and yet I still wanted to have sex with her. And so I thought that was really uh, interesting that those two emotions, those two very powerful emotions can coexist in the same relationship. So I thought it'd be an interesting idea for a film. So I wanted to make a movie where this couple was perfect for each other. They were madly in love with each other, but circumstances uh, um, you know, made them want to kill each other. And uh, th that's, it's that conflict that really makes it an interesting film. And that's, that's what I was uh, trying to do. Yeah, and it's, it really is a, a beautiful film. Yeah, thank uh, you. <laughs> I love watching it on the, uh, the big screen like this. And we actually do have uh, some clips from uh, two of your uh, upcoming you. projects. Do you want to introduce them? Yeah, people ask me what my next projects are. And um, there's one that's about halfway done. It's called uh, Revengeance. And it wasn't written by me. It was written by a guy named uh, Jim Lujan out of Los Angeles. And um, the animation should be done by uh, New Year's. That's, that's my plan if I can keep to my 10 hours a day. Uh, um, schedule, <clears throat> and it's uh, it's a different style. It's more LA uh, subculture, kind of sleazy people in LA, and then the other one is called um, uh, Hitler's Folly, and this is not an animated film. It's a mockumentary. It is in fact done, and I think we're going to premiere it here at this theater, the world premiere here at this theater in December, early December. So. Watch for it. It's very uh, offensive. <laughs> uh, I read somewhere that Hitler was a big fan of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And I thought that's so surreal that the most evil man in history loves such a cute, cuddly little little film. And so I thought it'd be funny to, to uh, make up the scenario where Hitler was a, a huge uh, animation freak and uh, he made animated cartoons. So we're going to see a couple of his cartoons uh, here. But before we sign off, I do want to mention I, I, uh, Christmas is coming. 
<laughs> and uh, Cheatin is uh, now it on Blu-ray. We have a limited edition of these, and I will have some at the, at the table. If I'll sign them for you, they're usually about twenty-five bucks, but for students, it's uh, or people here, it's twenty bucks. So it's a really cool gift. It also has a couple extra films on there too, so you get to see some extra stuff. All right. <laughs>